I'm a Syrian exile um, living in France for the past uh, couple of years and I think yeah I identify with the, the Syrian revolution as my main political heritage and political formation and training um, and even in exile I've continued um, engagement uh, with uh, the Syrian cause, the Syrian revolution cause, even though, um, you know, today the situation is, is, is quite complicated, but uh, with groups I'm involved in, we think it is uh, important at least to defend its uh, history and not to participate in a rewriting um, of, of, of facts and realities and a an negation of what was and in somehow still is in different forms a popular and legitimate struggle. Um, and it's true that when uh, we saw the movement in Iran um, last year, uh, Women Life Freedom, we were quite uh, excited, we were quite um, impressed, we were um yeah we felt uh, we felt an echo um because uh we knew yeah there's something similar in facing very brutal uh regimes that uh, really less very few if zero space uh for any kind of like democratic <laughs> games negotiations they don't even pretend <laughs> as uh, as it could be the case in other countries. So really, uh, most of the time, uh, the, the, the immediate and direct response to a popular uprising is just brute force. Um, I don't think uh, it, it's not really necessary to, to, to compare the, the degree of violence or of massacres of crimes against humanity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think there is something very similar in the essence of, of, of those two regimes, the Iranian regime. And, uh, and the Assad regime, the Syrian regime. And so, so that's on one aspect, I think the, 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 the similarity and the feeling of, uh, of um, yeah, of, uh, of support and of empathy um, with what was happening in Iran. And of course, the other thing, which maybe was less similar in Syria, was that, uh, but I think that is unique in the world when it comes to, to Iran, or at least in the last, uh, the last uh, yeah 20 years in, in the popular uprising that happened 2011 or 2019 is that it was a revolution centered on um, women as uh, uh, as 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 its center uh, which um, which was yeah was quite impressive and I think gives us a lot uh, to think about to learn to be inspired from and uh, but also to kind of shatter <laughs> um some uh, some illusions of uh, or not illusions maybe what, what what we thought of as not being very possible or probable and i think the woman life freedom uh that that revolt that uprising came and and just and and will i think mark history <laughs> in a certain way uh, 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 you know, saying that a, a massive popular uprising is possible, um, all while being centered on um, on women. We can't say issues, but led by women uh, because of a crime done to women. Because, uh, but I mean, of course, it, I think in Iran, where in a country where, as Iranian comrades tell us, there is some sort of like gender apartheid it's not very maybe it's not surprising <laughs> at the end but i think still it's something that will mark history for for a while <laughs> and we and and maybe now we don't see the direct i mean we see the, of course there are visible results but maybe just like the syrian revolution something uh, very profound has happened and we will Manage to see the seeds and the fruits of it maybe in a generation or two, but uh, but uh, as we say in Syria, the regime will fall, <laughs> inshallah, at a certain at a certain moment. If not now, then it's time. It time will come. 
Um, and um, maybe finally to continue on this question uh, of uh, similarity um, uh, and the, 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 the kind of empathy <laughs> and solidarity that we can have uh, uh, with the Iranian comrades, with Iranian revolutionaries, with Iranian activists um, is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's what, what we call um, all the issues that are, that are, that, that the axis of resistance <laughs> raises, <laughs> all the obstacles um, that uh, the axis of resistance pose, yeah, uh, as threats <laughs> to the kind of combats that we uh, try um, to do, that we try to be engaged in. Um, because as, uh, yeah, I mean, Syria is, uh, is supposed to be part <laughs> uh, of this axis of resistance with Iran, um, with, the, with, the, with militias in Iraq that are sponsored by Iran, with Hezbollah, for example, in Lebanon, uh, now with the Houthis in, in, in Yemen. Uh, so, so basically more or less reactionary forces um, that, uh, that have a very uh, specific uh, agenda and that they try to um, give it uh, anti-imperialist uh, uh, colors. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think they're... Uh, uh, we we see all those contradictions and all those and like this kind of discourse of the axis of resistance and i don't know people from very different parts of the world believing in 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 a, in some sort of legitimacy of the axis of resistance uh, after the 7th of october unfortunately because at least in syria we had the feeling for a while that although the axis of resistance was operational on the ground in terms of discourse in terms of the kind of a public legitimacy, it was something that was losing a bit of its uh, attraction, its force of attraction and conviction. And unfortunately, after the 7th of October, something um, of that legitimacy is coming back. Uh, and I think, for example, part of why the legitimacy was kind of being dissolved or deconstructed is was because of the popular uprising. Um, but yeah, now with the 7th of October, unfortunately, we're moving into more like or, or like a regime of like, yeah, war, global war is 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 uh, is just much more manifest. And we see how um, Western imperialism, um, yeah, just kind of taking back uh, the, 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 the hegemonic hegemonic role and uh, uh, and uh, and trying to yeah I mean have no qualms committing a genocide to keep interests uh, to keep uh, their interests to keep their agenda to keep uh, their um, um, a kind of uh, forces present uh, uh, in strategic in what they consider as strategic regions and in this case obviously Israel um, so what we what we see today is. Uh, is for, on one hand, uh, yeah, uh, Western imperialism going back to <laughs> also um, uh, a place that maybe for the past couple of years we felt again is also disintegrating, <laughs> maybe or is like less effective, less operational, less visible at least. And now uh, with the genocide that is taking place um, in Gaza, uh, we 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 see this uh, yeah this kind of camp. <laughs> That is that is crystallized again. That is very clear. That is very operational. Um, and so on the other side, as almost as like a mirror <laughs> effect, uh, we see also the axis of resistance pretending uh, to be uh, the um, kind of obstacle towards uh, uh, West, the extension of Western imperialism in our region, also taking back more power, more legitimacy, more, uh, and but also you know being more. Um, uh, or operational. We saw uh, how um, after the the attack of Iran, uh, uh, like the the, the rocket uh, attack that Iran launched uh, towards Israel, we, that there was uh, <laughs> uh, effective military operations from the part of the Houthis, from the part of Hezbollah, etc., etc. But 
I think um, as Syrian uh, revolutionary activist, we do not at all believe <laughs> uh, uh, in this kind of pretense of the Iranian regime uh, to be on the side of decolonization, uh, to be really on the side of anti-imperialism, because um, just to speak about Syria alone, um, many people in Syria today, and even people who weren't necessarily pro-revolution, consider Iran as a colonial presence, in the sense that uh, the Iranian regime, uh, since a couple of years already now, um, is uh, uh, taking territories, expropriating lands um, that uh, used to belong to Syrians who are in exile or who are now displaced. Um, uh, so if that is not <laughs> colonial, I don't know what is. Uh, of course, it's not the same as in other places, but there is something very colonial <laughs> in, in, in expropriating lands uh, uh, from um, people who, who, who live or, or used to live uh, on, on this territory, which is quite uh, ironic because part of the reason why some of those people are no, long, no longer live there is because of the Iranian military intervention during the Syrian uprising to suppress it. So um, again, there is something uh, at once counter-revolutionary, uh, uh, count, count, like literally counter-insurrectionary, uh, uh, that is followed by like a colonial uh, uh, gesture in terms of the land grabbing. So that's really like, yeah, of course, like not speaking about like uh, uh, Iranian sponsored militias that, that operate in different uh, territories in Syria and, and who do the, 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 the rule of law, uh, 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 obviously also exercising uh, brute force and all kinds of, uh, 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 yeah, by, by all kinds of violent means. So that is, uh, that's at least one tension, contradiction <laughs> that, uh, that we can uh, raise against uh, uh, the, 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 the axis of resistance as being on the side of uh, independence struggle, on the, side, on the side of liberation struggle, on the side of decolonization. And I think um, the other, the other contradiction or uh, uh, prop and problem is um, the instrumentalization of the Palestinian cause by uh, the Syrian regime. And I want, I and I and I, I have the feeling that in, in the Iranian regime, uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Iranian regime has the same methods or has the same tool um, uh, in instrumentalizing the the, the Palestinian cause. Uh, for uh, internal repression, uh, meaning that uh, in Syria, for from the 70s really, uh, until um, until very recently, uh, the regime would use the uh, Palestinian cause as uh, a mean to silence uh, dis uh, dissent, uh, internal opposition uh, to the regime. Uh, and also to justify uh, very repressive measures like uh, the emergency law, for example, that uh, is, is that has been in Syria since like I don't know 50 years, basically, with the coming, uh, um, yeah, since since Assad regime uh, was was in power, or like yeah, maybe three years after after uh, 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 the father came to power, and uh, so so the logic is really to say, uh, look, we need emergency laws, we need very important uh, and serious repressive they wouldn't say repressive but like laws to 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 guarantee our security because of the zionist threat and the the problem is the zionist threat is a real threat <laughs> it's not uh, it's not uh, just discourse but uh, throughout the years we we i mean as syrians we started realizing that there was really no intention, uh, and, and there are historical facts and events that prove this, from the Syrian regime to threaten in any way or form or to combat <laughs> uh, any, any Zionist uh, attack. Um, uh, on the contrary, we saw uh, the, uh, the, the, the father, Asad, the, the Hafez al-Assad, uh, 
uh, so the the um, the ex president of Syria, uh, m more or less actively uh, giving uh, the Golan Heights, which is uh, a territory that is occupied by. Um, Israel, uh, there's a Syrian territory occupied by Israel. We saw how the Assad regime more or less gave it away. <laughs> so it is very hard for us to, to believe that uh, on the part of the Assad regime, uh, there is uh, a true uh, intention or a, a sincere engagement uh, on the side of the Palestinian struggle. Um, the problem is that rhetorically, in terms of discourse, the Palestinian struggle was used um, to say it is not the moment any it's not the moment to, 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 to kind of see into our internal problems. It is not the moment uh, to think of like uh, reforms or of democracy or of the lesson, lessening of security measures because of the Zionist threat. And I wonder if in Iran there is something yeah, I, I feel that in Iran maybe there is something similar um, to this. And maybe the last thing that I would like to 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 underline in terms of the, the the contradictions or the tensions or the problems around this discourse that is propagated by the axis of resistance is um, this question that yeah sometimes people call campism or tankism, which basically. Um, yeah, implies that uh, if we support the Palestinian struggle, somehow we are obliged <laughs> to support the Iranian regime or the Assad regime or Hezbollah, etc., etc. Um, and I feel uh, that, uh, well, obviously for people who were involved in Syrian revolution, and I feel for people who were also involved in um, women life freedom in, in Iran, uh, it is very difficult to, well, to do that. <laughs> um, but I think our role is to say that uh, uh, we are very firm in our opposition to the Assad regime, we are very firm in our opposition to the Iranian regime, uh, but we are also very firm in our support to the Palestinian struggle. And unfortunately, um, we sometimes see it's 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 a minority position, but it is present. For example, uh, in Syria, that because of the instrumental instrumentalization of the Assad regime of the Palestinian struggle, uh, some people in Syria who were with the revolution would. It's really again a minority, but it's important to speak of, uh, about that. It is present that they would say, okay, so. Um, we're not necessarily going to be very firm in our support of the Palestinian struggle um, because we are against Assad, because we are against Iran, because we are against Hezbollah. Why? Because all those three forces participated in our, you know, in, in, in slaughtering our families. So it's a very difficult and, uh, 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 point, but I think our duty is to say that... Uh, we like those kind of positions are unacceptable. Um, the same way that we should uh, say that, for example, uh, people who are uh, who support uh, the Palestinian struggle um, uh, should not should be also very firm uh, about uh, uh, their opposition to the Iranian regime. And 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 in a moment like today, when there is a genocide uh, happening in Gaza. Uh, I, I can understand how that is very difficult uh, 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 to, to, to say <laughs> because we cannot deny the fact that the Iranian regime does uh, finance and give military support and weapons to the Palestinian resistance. But I think, again, our duty is to, is to, is to recognize this contradiction, to, to say that it exists without you know, participating in, in like a geopolitical campaign for the benefit of the Iranian regime. I think we have many ways to uh, show our support uh, and commitment to the Palestinian struggle without participating in like whitewashing um, uh, uh, crimes uh, committed by the Assad regime or uh, the Iranian regime.